I don't really like my hair like this, so we're just gonna play up. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, thank you for coming back to watch another video. I, oh, honestly I'm over this intro. Can I just like talk? I don't even want to give an intro, honestly. It's so annoying to give an intro for me. What's up guys, it's Nigeria. I'm back. You guys probably haven't heard my name said often. My name is pronounced Nigeria Barcelona. I go by Barcelona often. Um, I don't really go by Nigeria unless you knew me from way back when. Like if we go way back, you know me by Nigeria. But if you're just now meeting me, like for the first time, or if I'm introducing myself, I introduce myself as Barcelona. Cause I ain't got time to be explaining my name to you over and over again every time you see me. Like you're gonna introduce yourself and be like, hey, and then you're gonna have that awkward pause because you don't remember my name. And I don't wanna do all that, so I introduced myself as Barcelona because I know y'all remember that. Anyway, so um, welcome back to my channel if you're coming back. If you're new, um, check out my videos, see if you like them. If you do, I'm gonna be posting often. Subscribe so that you get notifications when I post because I want you guys to come back and be a part of my YouTube following. I don't know, whatever. Um, so this video I really wanted to do because as um, as I'm interacting with you guys, I'm getting a sense of who it is that's watching my videos. And obviously with putting out an acne journey video, you're gonna get a lot of people who are dealing with insecurities because acne is a big, um, is, a, is a place that, is a place, is a topic that harbors insecurities. So this video, as you can tell by the title, is about insecurities. And um, I wanted to share with you guys what my insecurities were and what my insecurities are. And um, I think that's important to share because sometimes people get carried away with thinking that girls who they see as pretty um, don't have insecurities. And this is something I had to learn because I used to look up to girls who were prettier than me and thought they had no insecurities. You know, you think people are pretty and they have no insecurities, but mind you, no matter what you look like, mark my words, no matter what you look like, you have insecurities. Everyone does because everybody wants to look like somebody else. That's just how it is. Um, but you can change that and you can just accept what you have. So I just wanted to go through a list of my insecurities and um, bring them to life and give you guys um, kind of like a name with a face type of thing, but like reality with a face. Give you guys a little backstory of who I am and where I came from and where I got, how I got to where I am now. So um, I'm gonna give you guys a list of insecurities I had when I was younger and insecurities that I got over and learned to accept. Um, the first insecurity that I grew up with was not being liked because I was dark skin. So, um, I don't know if you guys remember, you guys remember that time where it was like light skin versus dark skin? I think that was like middle school, honestly, so that had to be like 2012. There was this light skin versus dark skin thing. I always went to school in Spanish Harlem, so there were Spanish people everywhere. Um, Spanish guys, Spanish girls, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Ecuadorians, all of them, all there. Um, so I was pretty much raised around Hispanics, Latinos, and um, this had an impact on what I um, was conditioned to believe was pretty because in Spanish Harlem, all the girls that were popular and all the girls that were getting all the guys and the girls that boys were always talking about were the girls who were Spanish, um, the light-skinned girls with long hair, and... Um, you know, like the girl with long curly hair, whatever the case may be, right? So I grew up around that all the time. And I used to get teased when I was younger for being the dark skinned girl. Like I just felt so unattractive because I was dark skinned and that's not what guys liked at the time. The quickest way to get a boy's attention was to be Hispanic and a Latina. So anyway, I had a hard time, very hard time, like years, accepting the fact that your skin color does not determine if you're attractive or not. I don't think my confidence came with accepting my skin color until that whole melanin, um, this whole melanin movement happened and this whole black girl magic thing. Like honestly, to be completely honest with you, and that started maybe two, three years ago. Um, and I was probably how old? 17, 16, 16, 17 years old when I started saying, okay, hi, I'm dark skinned and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> You know, my next insecurity was, um, so a lot of people, and I see you guys in the comments complimenting my eyes. I appreciate it. I really do because 
like my other insecurity it took me a long time to get to accepting it um, my eyes are far apart <laughs> and I used to be so insecure about that because people would call me so many names like I got called my friends still call me this and they anyway my friends call me this and laugh and joke about it all the time but they call me Sid from Ice Age they call me Sid from Ice Age and recently I've accepted that I look like the red fish from Shark Tales because she looks just like me like low-key um and my mom not my mom it wasn't my mom I had a fish that my mom bought me that somebody said I looked like that fish it was it's those little black fish with the tails that have the eyes on the sides of their head <laughs> that have the eyes on their side the sides of their head and um all my life I was teased for having my eyes so far apart like sorry I can't help it I was insecure about having my eyes far apart but honestly it is what it is like my mom always my mom always encouraged me she told me I had beautiful almond eyes um, and she always made me feel good about it but I, you know my mom can do as much as she can but friends are harsh and schoolmates and peers can be really cruel so it took me a while to get over that but now I just be like you know I can stare into your soul these are like this Can you guys guess what my next insecurity is? Yes, it's my lips. Um, black girls get so much backlash for having big lips. Black girls get so much backlash. Like, it's ridiculous. It is so ridiculous because girls like Kylie Jenner can really get lip fillers and be mad cute, right? Like, she, she's popping because she got full lips and everybody looks up to her. But black girls have big lips and it's an issue. Um, you guys know what DSL was back in middle school? Y'all remember that? Mm-hmm. I got that all the time. But guess what? Now you want to have full lips and now you want to be all up talking about, oh, you got nice lips. You got full lips. I wish I had full lips. Like, I wasn't saying that in middle school. You wasn't with me shooting in the gym. But I used to be so insecure about my lips. Like... If people or boys were too close to me, like, I would look and be like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or I'd be like this, like, mm-hmm. Disclaimer. So the reason I'm mentioning guys um, constantly when it relates to my insecurities is because, unfortunately, we live in a patriarchal society where a lot of women's self-worth comes from the approval of men. And this has a large impact on young girls who are searching for confidence and looking for it in the wrong places, i.e. men. So I... I'm constantly referring to boys being the stem of my insecurities because that is unfortunately where our insecurities come from and where they start. But now we're gonna get back into the video, so let's go. And I just wanted to get over it. My lips are full. And they're cute. I used to be insecure about the coloring of my lips. Who else? Anybody else? Comment below if you were ever insecure about the coloring of your lips. I hated that my top lip was brown and my bottom lip was pink. I was like, why couldn't both my lips be pink like the white girls? Like, the white girls have two pink lips and I have a brown and a pink lip. God, why'd you make me that way? But <laughs> you realize, like, there's nothing. Like, that. that's just how it is. Oh my gosh, this one is so weird. Whenever I explain this one, and mind you, I'm being super transparent with you guys right now. Like, in order for us to make progressive changes, we have to be transparent. It's just what we have to do. So I'm being super open and honest with you guys right now. Because I know you guys can relate to honesty. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, I used to be very insecure about my body. Now, I know that sounds crazy because I was never overweight. I was never anorexic or, like, super skinny, anything like that. Um, but I always had a big butt. Okay, basically the way I saw it was, I felt like a guy would never really like me for me because all he liked was my body, and that brought me down so much because I felt like that was the only reason guys were attracted to me. And low key it was, the boys in my neighborhood would always like try to talk to me, and it was because of how my body looked. And I'm like, I'm so young, like, I don't want this. I don't want this kind of attention. I want a guy to like me for me, you know? And I'm worrying about that at like 10, 11, 12 years old. Like, oh my gosh, why is that? An insecurity for me at such a young age. You know, girls would always be like, Girl, your butt is so nice. Like, I wish I had a butt like you. But I was like, Girl, take it. Like, please, I'll do it. Because I never wanted, like, I never wanted a butt ever. And, but now I'm older and I'll be looking cute in my, my little, like, high waisted fashion over jeans, you know. I look cute now. I like it. I'm accepting. But that's just part of accepting everything. So, steps to recovery. That's where we're working. That's where we're going. Um, Stretch marks is the next insecurity. 
So stretch marks is every girl's insecurity when you are growing up because you have no idea why your butt doesn't look like the girls on TV and why your butt isn't smooth like the girls on Instagram. And let me tell you something, that's not realistic. Every girl's body changes. And recently I discovered that skinny girls have stretch marks too. I had no idea. I thought, I don't know what I was thinking, but my mom always told me it was because I didn't lotion. All right, mom. Um, but I had stretch marks growing up all over my butt and I was like oh my gosh I never ever ever wore bathing suits without shorts like shorts always my mom always had me wear shorts because she didn't want me to attract like inappropriate attention but I also preferred to wear it because I had stretch marks and I thought that was ugly I thought it was disgusting I was like ew like I look gross I have marks all over my body um, but I started seeing it being called tiger stripes and I think that was on tumblr um, and I started to see it become glamorized and accepted. I was like, wait, it's not just me who has stretch marks? It's not an ugly girl syndrome to have stretch marks? Get out. So when I realized that, I was like, okay, cool. Nobody really cares. And that was another thing I had to discover. Most of our insecurities, no one cares. How many of you are looking at me and like, are like, why was she ever insecure about that? My point exactly. No one sees your insecurities the way you do. Honestly, it's just something that we like, we are the, our worst critics and we can pick at everything that's wrong with us because we live with ourselves every single day. Think about it, you wake up and you look in the mirror every single day, so you know what's changing, you know what's different, you know what you don't like because you see it on you and you compare it to others. People pass by you and analyze you rarely. Unless they're like a person that's a constant in your life, they're not analyzing you the way you analyze you. So that's something to keep in mind. Your insecurities are not as severe as you think they are. But yeah, no, I love my stress marks. I, they're not even existed. They're not even a thing to me at this point. Um, having hair, natural hair, is it's like pl a plant. Like, for real, I have to water you, I have to moisturize you, I have to trim you, I have to be gentle, I have to wrap you up in a scarf at night. Are you serious? So, um, yeah, and then obviously, if you ever wore your hair looking crazy to school when we were younger, five years ago, seven years ago, you were nappy-headed, you were bald-headed. Listen, there were some harsh names, and I don't really want to relive that tragic part of my history, so let's not even go there. When did I accept my natural hair? Probably in high school. I started doing braid outs. That's when I started doing braid outs and twist outs, and I got really good at it, and that became my, my thing. Um, I still straightened my hair in high school, not as often. Um, as I did when I was in middle school. Listen, in middle school I was frying my hair. You know the heat protecting oil? I would put that on every section of my hair because I thought it was like, I thought it was like a prep to flat ironing. So I would put it on right before I put the flat iron and sizzle my hair. And I was like, no ma, no, I'm doing it right. You're supposed to do it this way. And she's like, honey, you're frying your hair. And I had no idea, I just did it. And one day I realized that my ends were looking like zigzags and I was missing hair in places I shouldn't have been missing hair. And um, it was time to get on the natural hair movement because it wasn't working for me. I was really becoming bald. And I used to be so insecure about this part of my hair. Like anybody else get insecure? Like these little naps back here. You ever had people come up behind you and like look at them? Like don't touch my naps. Don't do that. I didn't ask you to come and acknowledge them. Like I know that they're there and I'm trying to ignore them and you're making them present again don't do that that's rude I used to be so insecure about that but like I'm sorry the back of my hair doesn't like lay down straight like the Spanish girls or the white girls like it doesn't do that I'm sorry sorry to disappoint you no it just curls up back here there's nothing I can do accept it or leave the eyebrows so I used to be really insecure about not having any eyebrows I I swear, I used to feel like I had a health problem because I had no eyebrows, like I had no hair on my face. And low key, I still don't have much hair, like my eyebrows are not thick. They're very like sparse and thin. But like, it is what it is. It is what it is. Like, why do we care so much about what things look like? Why do we care? Why do we care? You know why we care? Because we care too much about what other people think. Who cares what they think? They are not any better than you. Like, they haven't discovered the meaning of life. Why do we care what they think? Unless you know the meaning of life and you know how to solve every problem in the world and you can cure cancer, I don't want to hear your opinion. Why did I care so much if somebody said, I have no eyebrows? Okay. Najed, you have no eyebrows. You look like a naked mole rat. Okay. And they... 
like life goes on. Did I still get an internship for the magazine company? Yes. Do I still have a YouTube channel and I'm hopping and I'm like a great person, have a great heart? Yes. Do I still have great friends? Yes. So why do I care what you think about my eyebrows? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Your opinion doesn't matter. Case closed. People who care about looks are so superficial. I don't even want that energy around me. Like I'd rather have people around me that care more about what's in here than what's here. And great, if you like what's here and what's here, good for you. We can be cool, like, cool. But if not, I I don't want superficial people around me anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You're doing me a favor by not liking me. Thank you. In college is when I stopped trying to be the pretty girl because there were other pretty girls and I wasn't about to compete with every pretty girl. <laughs> like, I couldn't do it. You can't compete with every pretty girl. You can't be prettier than every pretty girl. I read a quote once that said, the presence of another woman's beauty is not the absence of your own. Let that sink in. The presence of another woman's beauty is not the absence of your own. That quote clicked for me. I was like, wow. Just because another girl is pretty doesn't mean I'm not. And just because another girl looks different from me and is a different type of pretty doesn't mean I'm not. Just because he likes Spanish girls doesn't make me ugly. I, I love that quote because that made it so much more real for me and it made me like I could breathe. It was a weight off my shoulders like, wow, I'm still pretty just because another girl is pretty. That doesn't mean I'm not. Think about that. that, that really helped me. What I'm saying is we can't look like the girls who everybody loves and thinks is beautiful because we're not supposed to be a photocopy of them. We're supposed to offer something beautiful to the world and everybody doesn't have to like it. You don't have to be liked by everybody. You don't have to be liked by everybody. You're not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. Take that from this video. You will not be everybody's cup of tea and you don't need to be liked by everybody. Once you accept this, you will be powerful because then you can gain confidence in knowing that hey i'm only attracting people that are meant to be attracted to me that's why you need to be yourself because you attract your vibe attracts your tribe and you attract the people that are meant to be attracted to you when you are your authentic self if you try to be someone else you're attracting people that are only attracted to that person you are trying to be do you really want fake people around you you know be you so you can see who's really down for who you are and if that's one person Great! If that's two people, even better. But you don't need 50 people being your friends. That is too much energy, first of all. But um, I'm gonna cut it off here. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you took something from this video. I wanted to share it with you guys because I wanted to reach somebody and I want somebody to understand what I'm trying to say. Like, if you feel me, give me a snap. Like, snaps in the comments. If you feel me, give me a thumbs up. If you feel me, I don't know, comment saying, I feel you. Like, let me know. Because I need to know that somebody hears me. Like, I need to know somebody feels me, somebody's relating to me, somebody's connecting with me. Um, because I, that's my truth, and I'm speaking my truth um, of all my insecurities and my opinion on them. So, I love you guys, and I will see you guys in my next video. Comment down below and let me know your suggestions. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, and um, leave me a comment. Alright guys, see you.